I'm gonna take GTA 4 from this to this. Vanilla, they're some of the best GTA 4 mods out there. Watch to the end if you want to see how exactly these 9 mods have completely changed my game, and how you can change your own game too. I tested graphics mods, weapon mods, car packs and more. This is gonna be a lot of fun. Okay, let's get into it. Ice Enhancer 3.0 Natural is the best graphical mod I have ever used. And I've used quite a few, including Cry ENB, Excellent ENB, Simple ENB, and the list goes on. But yet, this is my absolute favourite, so why is that? It has really nice contrast and colour grading. It's not what I'd consider oversaturated or too colourful. Ice Enhancer Natural also has beautiful lighting and doesn't go crazy with the lens flares and other effects. As the name suggests, the mod aims to give a more natural, perhaps realistic appearance to Liberty City, and that's what I love about it. Through different times of day and weathers, you will see a wide variety of visuals. Early morning sunrise, windy afternoon, even in the fog, late night rain, it's genuinely great looking. It also comes with some bonus files, including improved blood textures. Both shooting others and getting shot leaves a devastating mark, it's pretty gruesome. Not forgetting vehicles too. Speaking of which, you probably notice where I'm driving here. You won't usually find this in GTA 4. This is the Vanilla Vehicle Add-on Pack, which gives you 51 new vehicles to play with, all from the Lost and Damned and the Ballad of Gay Tony. From the Super Diamond, to the Tow Truck, the Caddy, to the APC, the Akuma, to the Angel. You can even fly the Buzzard, the Swift, and the Skylift. What's amazing is that these vehicles are additional, nothing gets replaced, and some even spawn alongside the vanilla traffic. To make this more noticeable though, so as I actually see the new cars, bikes and trucks more often, I decided to use another mod called the Simple Traffic Loader. This allows you to customise how diverse and different the traffic is, and it stops the game from spawning the same vehicles too often. The vanilla bus will appear on the streets sometimes now, but also the prison bus from the Lost and Damned. I love this because it's kinda like there are prisoner escorts throughout the city now, which is pretty cool. I included about 7 motorbikes as well, including choppers and sports bikes. And of course cars, like the Tampa. Fun fact, did you know this vehicle originated in GTA San Andreas back in 2004? Well in that game, you might remember these huge vehicle carriers that you could ride over. Believe it or not, that's now possible in GTA 4 too. So it doesn't always go to plan, exactly. There are many more vehicles to cover, so I'll just continue revealing them throughout the rest of the video. And guess what? This is just one way I've completely changed Liberty City. You're gonna love this next one. Potential Grim is badass. Let me describe it. First, imagine all the gangs of Liberty City. There's Russians, Albanians, Irish, Koreans, Jamaicans, Italians, Hispanic, of course, there's the American bikers and hood crooks. Unfortunately, in the vanilla game, we don't get to see nearly enough interaction between all these allied and rival groups. This is where Potential Grim comes in. The mod creator has increased the rate at which gang members spawn. More importantly though, he's adjusted where they spawn. For example, you previously may never have found both a Triad and a Latino in this part of the map before, but now you will. These are sworn enemies to each other, so street fights will likely break out. Often these conflicts are with bare fists, but sometimes with a melee weapon, or even a gun. Not only will gangs provoke each other, but even the player based on what missions you have passed. A great example is Bleed Out. In that mission, you save Roman from three Albanian criminals, Callum, Bleedar, and eventually Darden. Story moments like this are made so much better because the world now reacts to your actions. In this case, you're an enemy to the Albanians from then on, and if caught by one in free mode, he will order you to leave and even attack you. Similarly, the Russian Mafia will become hostile after Dimitri betrays you. The Spanish Lords will become hostile after you shoot up their strip club. The Lost MC will become hostile after you take out Jim. And the Triads will become hostile after you eliminate their Aldoni based leader, Kim Young Guk. Fun fact, it's the same Kim Young Guk you actually helped smuggle into the country with Derek McCreary. If that was all there was to this mod, I would be happy, but there's more. Maybe the greatest thing is the fact that it changes the overall density of people and traffic in the world, depending on what time it is and where you are. This results in hugely crowded streets during the day, but by night, most people are sleeping and therefore it's much quieter. You will even see more parked cars. This is actually prime time to spot gang fights too. 
should notice more crooks out and about. In fact, many more pedestrians in Liberty City are now criminals, so don't be surprised when you see a shady looking character getting chased by the cops, or even buying from a dealer. I mean, I could go on all day, but I'm sure you have a clear understanding of just how great this mod is, so let's move on to something new. The Zalika Trainer is easily the best mod menu ever available for GTA 4 players, and my god do you have some options. For example, here I am as a giant in Star Junction, and I'm driving around in a rainbow car at 8 million miles per hour. Here I am kind of putting Roman out of business again, but other than all that silliness, it's actually a really useful tool for normal gameplay. Spawning cars, bodyguards, weapons, all of which can be customised real time from within the trainer, like how well your vehicle handles for example, what clothes your bodyguard wears, or how fast your gun fires. I couldn't possibly cover all this stuff in one video, but I will talk about my favourite features. For example, you can store your progress anywhere in the world with the save menu. You can freely adjust your camera with the field of view option. You can listen to music on foot with the mobile radio. You can change your appearance in the clothes section. And you can even enter first person mode. That was an entire mod in my last GTA 4 showcase, but today it's just one feature within an impressive trainer. And I should say, entering first person has got to be one of the most refreshing things to do in this game. It's not perfect, as the game wasn't intended for this, but having a new, optional perspective, a new way to play the game, is just a whole lot of fun. You really get to play Grand Theft Auto 4 in your own unique way with this mod menu. There's just so many options given to you, from adjusting the zoom of your radar, to the intensity of blood, to how bright pickups glow. Co-op is even now possible thanks to Zalika. You can actually play the single player story with multiple friends. I wouldn't blame you if you didn't believe me, but I can probably make a video on that if you want. I've now messed with so many big parts of the game, as I want to leave the smaller, more creative mods for next time if I decide to make a part 2. But so far I've completely left out weapons. I'm about to make up for it though. I ended up installing 4 mods to improve the gunplay for a more realistic and challenging experience. Firstly, there's Responsive Plus. It fixes some bugs, like uh, giving these cops glasses, but mainly it enhances the overall vanilla experience in big ways, including vehicle and graphical tweaks. But I didn't actually need any of that. The weapon changes, however, I certainly did. Responsive Plus increases the damage and accuracy of all the guns. Every weapon gets its fair share of fine tuning, of all types of stuff. The game is made harder, that's for sure, because if the weapons you're shooting deal more damage, that also means the weapons you're getting shot by deal more damage. And you carry significantly less ammo, which I like. It's also way more expensive to buy in stores as well. I appreciate all of that, because you just simply have too much money in GTA 4. So I was obviously happy, but then, I ran into a problem. I was absolutely destroying vehicles. They were blowing up left, right and centre. This was my fault though, remember I had avoided some files? That included a health boost given to each vehicle. I tried to fix this by reducing my weapon damage in the game files, which didn't help much. But then, I found something amazing, the IV Handling Editor. As you can see, the stats of every GTA 4 vehicle were right here, and after a little magic, I'd fixed it. Weapons were now much weaker against vehicles, my problem was solved, and I, I was surprised, like I, I actually fixed something, I fixed the problem. Next, I use B-Dog's improved animations pack. It does some good stuff, especially to the assault rifles. Firstly, it fixes a pretty annoying firing delay both the M4 and AK-47 suffer from, and it implements a proper reload animation, which was previously really lazily made by Rockstar. It also makes combat against Noose and FIB agents more interesting, as they will now relentlessly open fire instead of just shooting one bullet at a time. Along with several more fixes, we're given alternate animations for the SMGs taken from the console version of the game. I really love how Nico now holds the Uzi here, which usually looks like this. Finally, I wanted to tackle a big issue with GTA 4, recoil. When shooting, you should experience some bullet spread, but the PC version of the game just fails to do this. Installing this fix immediately makes combat more enjoyable, and certainly more realistic and difficult. I was surprised with how destructive my weapons now felt. As you shoot a car, for example, your bullets just pepper it, ricochet and broken glass flying in every direction. I also paired it with real recoil so that your gun physically jumps back. Now not only do you have to deal with less accuracy, but you also need to hold your weapon down. For a full tutorial on how to install these mods, check out my friend's video, which is on screen now. Or if you just want to watch another mod showcase, then you can click on the other video.